Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Srini here. And today we are going to talk about a very important and interesting interview question on rest assured API automation. That is, what is the difference between a put and push fair call? So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit that bell icon to get notifications. And please do check out my new YouTube channels on kids' videos and nursery rhymes so that you can basically teach your kids at home free of cost. And it's really entertaining and fun for the kids to watch as well. And I've also got another channel on coding tech and AI, where I'll be sharing on how to use different AI tools free of cost. I've explored so many different AI tools and using that AI tools is what I'm creating animation as well. And I'm also going to start a new series on Python, data science, machine learning, and how do we apply that to create AI tools. So stay tuned for those videos. So let's get started with today's topic. So what is the difference between a put and a post API call? So these are different methods which are there within a rest assured. And so you have to explain what is a put API call, what is a post API call. Put API call is generally used to perform update action. Either it's a partial update or you want to do a full update. So I'll explain that with a JSON object. So let's say you have a JSON here and you have got name. Let's say for now I'm saying she and let's see you've got address let's see maharashtra okay and let's say country is also there as india okay so what i've put got here is that i've got a json object here and in that json object i've got a key value pair combination okay now if i want to update only let's say the name okay so what i'll be doing is i can use the put api call to update the name so I don't have to give these two attributes. I can just give the name and it will update my request. Let's say I want to write like this way. So what will happen when you do this call? It's going to update my name object, whatever resource was there. Let's say resource ID for this particular one is 101. So for 101 object, it's going to update the name from Srini Iyer to Srini N Iyer. If I try to do a post put call for the first time. Let's say if I hit it again, second time, third time, with the same response body, that is only this particular object. What is going to happen? There is not going to be any change, right? Because the value is the same. Okay, so that is why we call a put call as an item potent API, means only the first API call which is hit, that is the first API put call would have an impact and the value will be updated. The remaining two or whatever number of times you hit the API will not have any impact. That's why put is an item potent API An item potent API is the API where only the first API call has an effect remaining API calls don't have any effect. Post is not an item potent API because the moment you hit post for the first time, it will create a new resource. It's not going to update the resource. Second time, another resource is going to be created, right? So this is why post is not an item potent API. And this is the difference between put and post. Post is used to create new resources, whereas put is used to update the existing resource. But let's say the whatever JSON body you are trying to hit with the put API, if it doesn't exist, then it will create. If the resource doesn't exist, then call is made, then it will create a new resource at the server side. So this you need to have the concept crystal clear in your mind. Now let's come to the second part of the question in interview that they will ask you to write a code to get a get an API call, get API call to an API, extract its response and validate if it contains our intended object. So this we can do using two approaches. One is using assert and I'm going to show that using traditional way, traditional rest assured way. And the second one, I'm going to use Hamcrest matches. So let's use that with Cucumber BDD approach. So let's go for the rest assured, assert one with traditional approach. Okay. Now what we'll need to do, you will need to set a base URI, right? So I'm going to do that basic things. Okay. Base URI equal to, I'm just taking a dummy API request response.in okay. that's all and what i'll be requiring is i'll be required to create a request specification object req let's say request equal to 
rest assured we have to use and we have to give a method means the basic prerequisites will be given by the given method now using this request we have already set the base uri we need to do get and here we need to write cities and getting a city details of let's say cities slash b1 because i want all the cities so i'm just saying b1 but this is going to store the response into a response object so i have stored that into response variable and by the way we have to import all of this into a so all of this is going to be within a class so i'm just going to write that complete code as well so that it is clear for those who are looking for this rest assured code for the first time so i'll say rest api calls okay and in that i will be having a method public void get api call okay. i'm going to have this method for get api let's say get api call test okay because we are going to have a at the rate test annotation method here so we have given this like this we are going to close this then we are going to close the class okay. now rest dot what we are going to get we are going to get the body we will get the body of the response right so we can store that into response body object like this way and now we need to extract from this response body the response string so what i'll do is response body dot as string if you do it's going to give you a return type of string object so i'll say rest string equal to this one and now i can use the assert statement assert dot assert true i can use any assert methods i'm using assert true here and i'm going to say rest string dot contains let's say it contains mumbai city so this is the first way of how we can do a check and you can also get from the response object get status code you can also get get status line as well right so these two things also i'm going to store it into this code equal to and this also you can do assertion i'm just writing down so that you know how to extract it this status line equal to like this way and you can do assertions the similarly how we have done here i'm just writing down so that it is clear how do we do that so we can say let's say we want to do assertion that this particular code is equal to 200 so i'm going to say equal to 200 and by the way, this has to be small and this has to be capital. This is the naming convention. And again, the same thing we can use here that this particular thing contains 200 because 200 over, right? So this is the way how we will be doing it in a traditional way, the assertion. Now let's come to the second way. Second method is using matches that is hampest. So I'm going to say import or dot Amcrest dot matches dot. Now we have to import a particular methods, right? So we can say less than equal. This is one particular method. Like that, there are multiple methods which you'll have to import. Like you let's we can say equal to, right? Greater than equal to, and so on. So I'm just writing a couple of them here. And let's say we are going to use here a cucumber BDD approach of BDD style of rest assured. So let's say how we will have the Kukumba BDD style. First, let's declare a string variable and I'll say URI and CTPS. First response dot IN dot cities dot B1. I'm storing the entire URL in URI here. Now, what I need to do is I have to start creating a response object, right? So I'll say here rest assured dot given dot now what we need to do we need to basically hit this uri right so in that now i have one more thing called content type so i'm going to say content type i want json so i'm just going to give some indentation here so that and you can give indentation as well it looks good good actually the way you write the code it looks really good now, after this, what do we need to do? We need to use get method. So I'm going to say when is what I need to do. I need to hit an API call. So I'm going to say when 
what I'm going to do in when I'm going to get API. What I'm going to get, I'm going to just simply pass the URI. Then what's going to happen when you do get, you're going to get the response. So I'm just going to say then. It's very simple abbreviation of using it. And then in the response, you'll be getting a body, right? Now in the body, you will have multiple attributes. Let's say we have a city attribute. So I want to do assertion that it basically contains city. So I'm going to say equal to Mumbai. So I want to do assertion that this particular thing, it includes the city as Mumbai. So this is the way how we can do assertion. And if you have a number, for example, I am going to copy it as it is. If you have, let's say a number, let's say pin code, not pin code. Uh, let me say, for example, marks. Let me say, for example, marks, just consider as a dummy example. And if I want to say greater than or equal to like that, right? Then I can give the marks whatever I want. It should be greater than or equal to 60. So it's going to do an assertion here that whether the marks object within the JSON body, right? Whether it contains the value greater than or equal to 60. So let's say you have a JSON body like this. So you will have marks like this. And let's say the marks is having a value 90. So this is the assertion going to happen. And since in this scenario, 90 is greater than 60, the assertion is going to pass. If you had 40, assertion is going to fail. So these are the two traditional approaches which normally we use it in our automation. That is using Hamcrest is the second approach, which I explained. And the first approach was using the normal assert statement. And you can use assert equals, assert true, assert false. There are so many different assert methods which you can use, right? And using the ham crest, we can use as greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to, etc. So I hope this particular interview question, you would be able to crack in your next rest assured API automation interview, and you will be able to get a job. And I wish you all all the best for the same. So please do subscribe to my channel if you have not done yet. And thank you so much for watching my video.